Today is all about panoramas. No, wait a minute, HDR. No, panoramas. Do you know what? Let's do HDR panoramas. My name is Andy Hornby, photographer and vlogger. 17 years ago I started teaching myself photography. Today, I travel the UK as a professional wedding photographer, landscape photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, my mistakes and my tips and advice. Morning and welcome to another video. It's cold. Hope you can see the colour in the sky behind me because about 10 minutes ago that was just bitching. It was awesome, an awesome sun, sunrise this morning. Uh, down at Eastney Pier. Today I'm looking at HDR panoramas. And if you want to know what that is, all you really have to do is watch my last two videos because uh, they will explain what a HDR image is and it explain what a panorama is. Today we're going to combine the two and make a HDR panorama really easy in Lightroom and I'll show you that a little bit later so let's get into this oh look at that sky pretty good all I'm really going to do is set my camera into bracketing mode we did this in my last video have a look really easy on the Sony I've got just a few little buttons sometimes it's in your menu system if you're Canon it's in your menu I think it's in your menu if you're Nikon as well uh, but for Sony uh, I'll show you that now. You can see how I, I just literally just uh, hit left on the wheel, went down to the bracketing. I've got two stops under, two stops over, and uh, that's it. And all I've got to do is compose my image. And uh, this morning it is of Eastney Pier and the bleachers. And I'm actually panning right the way across. I'm going to do three shots, three shots, three shots, three shots, three shots, three shots. End up with something like 16 shots, something like that. And late one in Lightroom so don't go anywhere we're gonna just hit a few buttons it's pretty amazing actually and Lightroom will do all the work you can even if you wanted to do like we did with the extreme panorama the different layers you could do a bracketed three layer panorama and get a massive huge image out of that and uh, you know if you print it to billboard something like that awesome when it comes to the HDR side of things you have to ask yourself if you actually need to do it this morning i'm backlit by the sun although it's cloudy the sun hasn't actually come up yet there was a lot of light in the sky and underneath the the, the pier the eastern pier it's very dark in the pictures massively dark so if you want to bring that detail back bracketing might be an option for me i know this camera can handle it i wouldn't necessarily need to do it myself the a7 III has a very good dynamic range we spoke about this in the last video but some you know may, maybe uh <clears throat> less expensive cameras some uh, crop sensor cameras if you're shooting jpeg potentially you may want to do bracketing HDR shots and if you wanted to do a panorama because you've got a long lens on you can't get you know the whole composition in one shot this is an awesome opportunity for you to use HDR panoramas I've done the picture I've taken it let's get back to the office and uh, we'll pump it into Lightroom and have a stab at editing this uh, awesome image I'm really excited about this one that picture is amazing let's do that in a bit. It's cold. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. And I'm going to make this really, really simple for you. Here are all the 21 images. Just uh, we're going to go through them now quickly and make sure they are pretty good. The horizon is really straight in this one, which made it awesome. I managed to get the tripod and the camera steady, so that obviously is going to help. Uh, our horizon isn't going to be all over the place. All you got to do is select them all, right-click, photo merge, and HDR panorama. Easy. I'm going to let this do its little thing. And there we go, done. Pretty simple. Uh, not really a lot more we can do here. We can have a look at spherical potentially. I don't think perspective's gonna do us any favors. Uh, not a huge amount of difference really, but is what it is. We can have a look at the auto crop. We might wanna just, uh, uh, 
Uh, let's have a look at the boundary warp. So let's see if we get any more of the sky back. Because the sky I'm looking for, obviously, it was amazing uh, sunrise. Yeah. I think I'm going to leave that. The horizon's still straight. Let's go with that. Let's merge that. And there we go. Pretty much done. I'm going to do my own little edit now. If you want to follow along my edits, uh, we're going to go into the develop module and uh, have a little mess around, see if we can, we can just crank up the colours a little bit. The crop, I'm going to crop the people out. Sorry guys, uh, you weren't there. I only uh, shot a bit further than I needed to, so I could crop in. I'm probably going to bring the, the bottom up a little bit as well. Maybe some more. Yeah, and I, I like that. It's a nice, uh, nice composition. Now I'm just going to start my basic edits. It's already done some auto editing for us, uh, but I'm going to crank the shadows a little bit more. Also, I'm looking for the detail underneath the pier to, to just pop. Uh, shooting HDR means that we're going to have all that detail, and it's going to look pretty amazing. Uh, bring the blacks back ever so slightly uh, to a point where they're not uh, clipping, and the whites too. And I'm just going to go through texture, probably... Yeah, take the text job, maybe bring the clarity down. This definitely dehaze. Always go for the dehaze slider when you can. Bring the clarity down ever so slightly. Vibrance potentially up ever ever so much. Yeah, a little bit there. I like that. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna before I do any other edit, I'm just they're just bugging me. All the sensor dust. I'm just gonna start getting rid of my sensor dust. There wasn't a whole lot in this. Just wanna make sure I get it all, that's all. Let me fast this bit forward for you, won't be a second. Okay, now I'm going to get back to my edits. Done on my sensor dust. Uh, follow along if you want to. It's going to be different for each picture. Obviously, my picture is going to be different to yours. When if you ever go out there, uh, it just is what it is. I'm just looking at the detail underneath the pier there. If I turn that off and on, look. If I uh, bring up the shadows, take the shadows back to the original. You can see the difference is huge. We can play with these sliders because we've done HDR. My camera can handle this anyway. But potentially, your camera may be slightly older and uh, may not keep the details. If you start cranking the shadows, uh, you might start getting some pixelation underneath the pier area. I'm just going to add a few bits and pieces here. So we're going for a radial filter quickly. Uh, I am going to create a luminance mask because I don't want this to affect the pier. So I'm going to just hold down my Alt key or Option. And anything that's black won't be affected by this, uh, this effect. So we're just going to... Bring up a little bit of the yellows, a little bit of the magentas. Going to get some orange back in the sky. There's orange in the sky already, but I just want to make sure that that's, uh, that's going to be in there. And I'm going to crank the saturation quite a bit. I want this to really, really pop. Dehaze a bit more. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, Dehaze is going to dark areas. I don't want to darken at the moment. Bring the clarity down if it's slightly. It is clouds area. Don't forget, we don't want to, don't want to bump the clarity. You may have added a little bit of contrast by accident. Uh, so bringing the clarity down is going to help us in that sense now I'm going to do my usual sort of curve adjustments I'm going to bring up the shadows ever so slightly more give them a slightly washed out look uh, bring the shadows back again in uh, not so much the blacks and lighten the lighter areas again isn't there a little less S shape curve that I generally add don't want to go too much on the on the shadows there but it's just something I tend to do Personal effect, it's up to you. I'm going to sharpen the image quite a bit and then mask it so it doesn't affect the sky. And a little bit of post crop vignette. Yeah. Let's uh, feather that a little bit slightly. Yeah, that's fine. That's pretty much it. Here's the before and after. Uh, yeah, love it. Fantastic. Added some colours back in the sky and it looks uh, pretty damn cool. Have a look underneath the pier here, the before and after. Look how dark it was before and how much detail we just brought back using this method. Awesome. Nice. Okay, I want to thank you for watching this video. Once again, if you got anything out of this video, please whack a thumbs up. That's always going to help. Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think. And if you uh, use this method, let me know how you get on with it. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get updates every time I upload a new video. 
Uh, that'd be awesome. And until the next one, you guys stay awesome, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.